Hello and welcome people to Exchange for Media. This is Chehneet Kaur in conversation with a seasoned journalist and author, Mr. Umesh Upadhyay. He has launched recently a new book, Western Media, Narratives on India from Gandhi to Modi. Let's know from him what is in this book and what makes it special. Welcome, sir. How are you feeling today? How's your Saturday going? I'm, I'm very fine. Thank you for inviting me to this conversation about my book. I'm very happy to be here. The the cover of the book in the first look looks amazing with the red and the yellow getting into the eyes. So, what is the content of the book that makes it so special? If I were to uh, tell you in one sentence that this book is about colonization of minds, and it, it talks about how a uh, Western media is an important tool and instrument to further this colonization of mind, and I say in my book. That actually, uh, if you see, Western media's genesis, per se, is with the imperialist conquests. So Western media itself is a product of imperialism. And a, as a product of imperialism, its job, its mandate is to further nurture this. Yes, mm -hmm. after the Second World War, uh, the physical subjugation of developing countries of Asia, Africa and Latin America uh, was not possible. Though till 70s, there were yeah. some countries, uh, they were still not free. But, but the physical subjugation is gone. Yeah. But has imperialism, imperialism ended? No. In, in, in various form, this imperialist one conquest of the rest of the world continues in yeah. economy, politics, culture, yeah. cinema, film, etc., etc. And there, Western media works as a, as an instrument to further this uh, subjugation. Makes sense. Uh, speaking from a very young generation perspective, I also feel that. Uh, when you speak about the influence of Western media and the and the impact of Western media's representation of India, I follow social media and most of, of course, my age people do directly follow news on social media. We look up to publications like New York Times and, uh, you know, Harvard Business Review and all of those, BBC for that matter specifically. Whatever they publish, uh, ultimately our minds do think that this is the ultimate truth since they are taken to be at that stature. So what do you feel is the impact of such representation of India on the young minds of Indian kids. It, it does impact, it yeah. does, it is not only impacts young mind, it impacts the society to a very large extent. Correct. Say for example, uh, uh, the entire power structure in the world, whether it's the International Monetary Fund or a WHO yeah. or, you know, World Human Rights Organizations, etc, etc. Who yeah. controls them? Yeah. And, and these policies made by them impacts us. Correct. So what happens is that the public opinion made here yeah. in, in our people and public opinion made in the Western societies right. both work together. Correct. And, and it's not only young people. It's not only, I mean, it's not limited to this generation only. Yeah. We also, we always thought, oh, it has come in BBCO, it must be ultimate truth. Yeah. And I'll just give you quote one example uh, how it impacts uh, the Western societies and their narrative building. Yeah. There is an incident uh, in, in 1948, which I've narrated here. At that time, Sardar Patel was busy in integration of states. Mm. And there was a question of Hyderabad. Okay. The On September 17th, I suppose, 1948, Finally, Nijam of Hyderabad signed the instruments of accession. Okay. Before that, there was a lot of things were happening mm. and Nijam did not want to, you know, merge with India. Mm. And his, his uh, uh, follower called Qasim Rizvi yeah. had gathered two lakh people and he was trying to, you know, go away from India and, and, and uh, try to uh, um, uh, hoodwink his things. Yeah. Now, what happens is, and how media narratives plays a great game. Yeah. A report appears in one of the newspapers in UK, London, in the morning of 15th September, mm. 
which paints Sardar Patel as a villain. That government of India is not uh, adhering to all the uh, agreements done with with the with the with the uh, 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 Nijam. And on the basis of that report, the same is discussed in House of Commons. Oh. And in the House of Commons, the impact. Impact. The House of Commons, the Secretary of State at that time yeah. gives assurance to the opposition who actually brought this report that we will Britain will take this to UN Security Council. And Britain at that time happened to be chairman of the Security Council. Look. Yeah. Like how, how it works. Correct. Very interestingly, in the very same debate, hmm. very same debate question of Burma, Myanmar, hmm. also came up. There was also disturbances. On that issue, the Secretary of State said, or State said, oh, you know, we are, our sympathies are with the, the government of, new government of Burma, and we don't want to discuss it. Hmm. So, because India did not suit, it, suit them, India was not willing to work with Britain and join NATO yeah. or their alliance. India did not suit them. Not only that happened, one Londoner called Gordon Collier, hmm. he reads these reports in British media. He writes a letter to Sadar Patel that, you know, the way you talk to people, the way you, you give your letter, uh, speeches are not liked by us. So this impacts. And, 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 and I've, you can read in the details that what happens during that, uh, you know, conversation. Yeah. Uh, and Sadar Patel actually replied and uh, said a lot of things. And he's there said that. British correspondents misrepresent India. Yeah. They tell lies. So you, your question was, is that your generation? Generations across generations. You right. know, generation after generations have believed them to be independent, yeah. which they are not. And I proved without any doubt in my book, book, one after the other incidents, quoting them only. Hmm. That how they played games against India and yeah. other societies. And at times I feel the loss is irreparable because you've you've maybe damaged history in a way or two by misrepresenting India in some of the news, right? Do you feel so? Yeah, of course. One in incident I can tell you about what happened. Our parliament was attacked. Correct. Yeah. Atal Bihari Vajpayee was yes. the president of our Prime Minister of India. Yes. And he was visibly angry. Yeah. So we... Uh, deploy troop on uh, Pakistan border. Hmm. Western media started saying that India was looking for war. India was painted as, you know, somebody who was looking for war. And if you see the reporting of those areas, everybody forgot, they don't write about the parliament attack. And they create a scare in, amongst their population hmm. that if there are there is nuclear war, what will happen? And ultimately, India was pressurized to withdraw those troops. Hmm. So it impacts us. It impacts our policy. It impacts our public opinion. Yeah. It impacts us as a nation. Yeah. And then I'll just give you a light, lighter one. And then how it is. You know what happened in the uh, uh, recently held Asian Games? Hmm. We won 107 uh, medals. Yeah. And this was a very good very performance. Big win. Yeah. Prior games, we won only 60 medals. Okay. From 60 to 107, it's a quantum jump. Yeah. Anybody would say that. Yeah. And India was visibly very happy. Everybody was happy. True. It was not a question of only government of India. Yeah. It was every athlete, every person like you and me. And we were really jubilant. True. What is the headline given by Reuters? Not about it. I can yeah. tell you, I have quoted it. Yes. It says, India... Uh, Big fish in a small Asian pond. Oh. <laughs> so the representation, the headlines. This is how you look at us. Exactly. When we our Mongolian reaches, you say you publish cartoons like which are demeaning us. Which that are, I'm aware which, of. Yes. Which is racist. Yes. So it is generation after generation it happens. Mm. It is high time that we realize that Indians that anything coming from west is not pure gold True. everything coming from west is not pure gold there is an agenda there are biases there are uh, preconceived notions about india 
Indians, India's leadership, and they do it again and again and again. Mind blowing. I I love the way you put it to the point. Uh, years ago, I'm sure when you thought of starting to write this book, uh, there might have been a point where you thought this needs to be addressed. Yeah. What was that point of inspiration? Uh, when I was a student uh, in in JNU, I'd gone to Canada for three four months. Okay. And and uh, that was in uh, 1983. And 1983, uh, you would, uh, if you recall, was a very painful period for India, as uh, terrorism was happening in part of Punjab, yeah. and we were, as a society, we were going through a tough time. Sure. This this entire uh, terrorist movement uh, uh, was uh, troubling us as a, as a country. Right. And and then uh, at that time uh, in 1983. Uh, Yani Jail Singh used to be the uh, Home Minister of India. He was made the first ever Sikh President in India. Right. 1983. Yes. All right. Now, come, I'll come back to Canada. Yeah. Canada has a huge Punjabi population. Right. So much so, when I went to Canada, and it was, I suppose, Air Canada, there were announcements in Punjabi. Yeah. <laughs> Air Canada, which is a lot Yes. <laughs> they even they say today. Yeah. <laughs> if you go to Toronto, a place like Toronto, you you have uh, signages and Gurumukhi. Yes, yes. I'm I'm a Sikh, so I understand. You Half of it. my family lo- lives there. You know it. You know it. Yeah. So now, in the midst of terrorism in Punjab, mm. a Sikh becomes first president of India. Now, as a student of international politics, I was studying. I was, you know, those were the times when. You didn't have any cell phones. You didn't have any uh, phones, phone facility like this. Uh, and then, so I wanted to see that news. Mm-hmm. But mind you, and I, believe I, I didn't find that news in any of the newspapers that I got in Canada. In those three, four months. Okay. So a Sikh becoming first ever president of India in Canada was not newsworthy. Only news in three years, three months I saw was that one bus of pilgrims fell in a ravine and 30 people are killed. So a bus accident was more important than more important yeah. about India. So at that time, the question came to me as a student, why I am painted like that? Why, uh, you know, we are a very proud democracy, a proud civilization, a very proud nation. Yeah. And and it hurt me that I didn't find it. But then, you know, over years, over the years when I I, I, I went on, you know, writing, I became a journalist, it always felt in Hindi, Jabbi Koi Kushi Hoti hai, to Pashimka media Rudali Gata hai, Matam Banata hai. Chahe wo Hamara Chandrayan ho, Mangalyan ho, for example, Chandrayan. Yeah. We, 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 we were a very proud country that on the south pole of the moon, we have reached there. Yeah. And what was the questioning of BBC uh, reporter to its, its uh, uh, BBC uh, uh, anchor to its reporter in the, when Chandrayaan 2 was launched? And they, he asked, oh, so you are uh, sending uh, rockets to moon mm. uh, when uh, so many poor people are poor in India? Yeah. There are no toilets in India? Yeah. What is this question? What is the relation between two? <laughs> yeah. As per the data, Britain has 20% poor as per their own data. We anyway have crossed their economy. Oh, well, I'm just mm-hmm. saying. Yeah. So, we, why, da, why can't I ask you that if so many Brits are, Brits are poor, why did you spend so much money on the coronation of a 74 years, Very uh, true. you know, uh, whatever you call it? Yeah. No, you don't ask those questions there. You will always ask us. And two, is the progress of human civilization is linear? Do you mean to say that we should not spend even single penny on education, scientific development, innovation, research till every stomach is fed? No, it's not done like this. Not practical. Yeah. Two, ISRO has done a lot of work in alleviation of poverty. Correct. So that's, so, you know, it's, it's like... The, the, the kind of uh, perspective they have about us. Right. Which I question. With, I question with 
proper documentation, proper citation, proper research. Amazing. And so the timing of this book is is something that of course comes to my mind. The timing of this book is very much aligned with the start of the elections. Of course, uh, was this pre thought? It just happened by chance, or is there a motive behind this? This book would always be timed. Hmm. I think it has come little later. Yeah. <laughs> it could have come in fifties. It could have come in sixties, seventies, eighties, any time. It could have come during Indira Gandhi days. When she bent BBC twice, hmm. uh, it could have come during Atal Bihari Vajpayee days. It is just a coincidence that elections are happening, and in any way, now general elections are happening in India. Every six months, there is one election or the other. So, so <laughs> uh, to say that uh, because elections, yes, there are there is an importance of narrative during elections, but um, I, I think there could never be. Um, you know, right or proper time to launch this book. Of course. Or mean to say, every time is right. Yeah. When when the mess around is going on since ages, I guess there's no wrong or right time to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Um, coming to the part where I feel I feel if I said you I think you said that you took more than two years about to uh, finalize this book. What are some of the challenges or struggles that you came across while you were drafting this book? Is there something you would like to share with the readers? Yeah. The problem is that on this subject, not much has been done. Hmm. I didn't find any, uh, you know, seminal work in this that that has somebody with a research mindset uh, going deep into uh, the the workings of um, Western media. And when we call Western media, I just just want to paraphrase it. It is dominant English Western media. Yeah. Western media is a whole lot a bigger concept, okay. but I have confined because that because the Western English media impacts us. Correct. Yeah. Especially British media because we had a history with British and now American media because they are the leader of the uh, Anglo-Saxon world. Yeah. So as to say. So I think the first challenge was to get the uh, uh, real sources. Real academic work on that, there is none. Two, uh, I had to read a lot to find out uh, the old papers, old, uh, uh, you know, archives. Uh, I've quoted some papers from 1911, wow. uh, September 1911, even before when Vasco de Gama came and Columbus came and Sir H.M. Stanley came. Yeah. What were they thought when they came to India? Yeah. Uh, they had two, uh, I mean, when the, these... Uh, uh, explorers, explorers came to India and other countries. They had twin objectives. Mm. One was commerce; the other was evangelism. Right. And in one way or the other, it continues even today. Wow. That's well said. They 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 they, they do it smartly. They, they yes. do it more smartly yeah. today. They are more nuanced today. They don't uh, use those words which are not uh, acceptable today. But mind you. Uh, the, the, when Vasco de Gama was asked uh, why have you come to India uh, one of his associates said to seek Christians and spices <laughs> in so many words yeah. uh, it continues even today my goodness uh, brings me to the point where what is the solution where is the end how do we see light in this kind of a situation I think one is that we almost cover half distance in the sense that we are discussing and we are talking about it. Of course, yes. We are no more enamored by the West as we were. Yeah. Uh, this is a generation of people like you. Uh, if, if I were to use an analogy of cricket, uh, it is not Sunil Gavaskar, it is Virat Kohli today. Uh, if we have gone beyond even Virat Kohli, we have, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, likes of um, uh, many other a uh, new cricketers which Shubman are coming in Shubman Gill yes. and then uh, they can look into eyes and uh, you know reply them back. Correct. Uh, so I think half the distance has been covered. Yeah. But more work has to be done within India. Right. People has to know that a film does not become great, great film if it get Oscars or not. Correct. I don't think that we should look for validation from them. 
Correct. If Lata Mangeshkar get not, does not get mentioned in Emmy Awards, it does not mean that Lata Mangeshkar is not a great singer. Why should we look validation from them? Sure. We are enough. Our languages, see the literature in the, our languages. You see Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam, Hindi, Punjabi. Guru. I mean, you, you see such a treasure. Yeah. We are such a great civilization. So let's have confidence in us. Let's take what Gandhi used to say, whatever good things we should take. But let's not accept their, what you say, um, garbage as, 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 as the, 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 the gospel intake, truth. Yeah, the gospel, gospel truth. truth. That's what is important for us to understand. And if this book in, in any manner can raise right questions in people's mind, I think my job is done. Right. Uh, since you mentioned within India is the next focus, one advice that you'd like to give to budding journalists who are trying to look for uh, references from Western media, because I'll tell you uh, as a budding journalist, as a young journalist, we also look up to the writings and the way they refer to the pieces, the way they do their research. Uh, one advice that you'd like to give to young journalists to keep in mind while they're uh, exploring their part in, path in the career of journalism. I think start doubting those sources start questioning look for research for that you will have to work hard of course that's that's one thing yeah. you know you had asked me that why it took me three three years almost because i had to every day work three four hours only for my book apart from my uh, normal job and look for you know look for validation look for primary sources go to primary sources so one thing is that Whenever these things come, I'll just give you one example of, you know, how it was done. Uh, there's a, uh, you know, uh, BBC report about, you know, what happened um, uh, when the second wave was uh, becoming weaker. Uh, UK announced a new policy for those coming to UK. And they, you know, announced that there would be red list, amber list and green list. Indians you know, but not allowed to go on the basis of the vaccination they had got. They started doubting Indian vaccination. They said India was an amber list, but still Indians uh, traveling to UK had to go for 10 days quarantine. Mm -hmm. It was very expensive. That's the, the, the UK policy. It, it's another thing that uh, India protested. Mm -hmm. It had reciprocal things and within 20 days, the policy was changed. But I'm looking at how media did it. Yeah. So there was a BBC report which says that, look, uh, uh, it, it says that India, there is a lot of criticism of the British policy. And then it wrote about a, a report in, in, in a website called Checkpoint. It said the Checkpoint report has said that there was a black marketing in the uh, vaccination certificates. Hmm. And maybe this has something to do with that report hmm. so it doubted the validity or the sanctity of the indian vaccination certificate through the use of checkpoint report yeah now i went to the checkpoint website hmm. i looked for that report now interestingly it talked of 28 countries where these black marketing was happening and more interestingly, it was also happening in UK and the US. <laughs> wow. No, no But very smartly, BBC report did not mention this. Of course. This is half truth. This is not telling the complete truth. Right. So on the basis of that, you create a kind of a, you know, a doubt in readers' mind that, oh, this is because of it. But you don't report that US and UK were also having those black market thing. Right. Now, uh, if that decision was taken on the basis of that report, US uh, uh, citizens were allowed to go without uh, any checks, without right. any quarantine. So I'm just saying, I gave you this example. Right. When you get these, you know, such reports, such NGO reports, such reports, go to the base of it. Look at who has written it. Look at who are the promoters of it. Look at who are the funders of it. You will more often than not, you will find the circle completing itself. That narrative is built. This game of narrative is not built by 
media alone. Mm-hmm. There are academics, there are NGOs, there are right. international institutions, there are an entire ecosystem. Look at all the points of that ecosystem for a report. And more often than not, you will find, oh, this started here, this started here. So work hard, go deeper into a subject, read more. Right. And you're lucky to, today you have internet, you have a, a chatbot, you have Google, you can find things very easily. Yeah. So that would be my, uh, you know, two cents of uh, uh, advice to uh, journalists. Oh, great. Who want to become a journalist. Yeah. Yes, of course. Uh, I would like to end this on a little light note. We have a small rapid fire for you. Uh, just one word questions as fast as you can be. Uh, one motto you live by. Be sahaj, normal. Great. One journalist you look up to. Uh, there are so many of them. It will be unfair to name one. Okay. Teaching or traveling since I know you love both. <laughs> traveling. Wow. High five on that. Same for me. <laughs> Describe the book in one word. Colonization of minds. Amazing. Next milestone you want to achieve? Uh, do my bit to this uh, entire war of narrative building. Okay. Now we are done with our, that segment. I would love for you to give last closing comments on the book and why the readers should get a copy of it. I am for sure getting one for mine. But please let if, the, the viewers know. If you are a serious student of media, if you are a journalist, if you want to do... Uh, you want to know why certain reports are written. If you blindly believe that uh, everything written in, 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 in um, the Western media uh, is not true, or even if you believe it is true, yeah. you should read. You will get some material. And it's a uh, very easy read. Uh, 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 it's less than 200 pages. Mm-hmm. And uh, the cost is also not very high. Uh, I, I think it costs less than... Um, a Starbucks coffee so <laughs> you can buy it you can buy it at Amazon you can buy online on Amazon or bookstores uh, and I can uh, assure you of one thing that uh, you will not uh, get bored you will not repent uh, that you invested this money and you'll get uh, value worth of uh, what you're looking for thank you so much sir for your time thank you people for tuning in this is Chenny Kaur and Umesh sir signing off thank you thank you